Welcome back to Zero Tolerance with Practical Machinist uh, for another episode of Learn to Burn. We are doing a special episode this time for a, an employee that was helping us run our molding press, uh, Smith, who got diagnosed during Christmas with leukemia. So Murphy is real good friends with Smith and decided to um, do something real special. So we're gonna make a, not a typical mold today. We're gonna make a very special mold. Um, and if you are a fisherman, you're gonna really like this episode. Know how soft baits get made for fishing, especially the jiggly ones. I don't know how they were made until I actually saw from Smit how they get how they get made. So he has inspired me to help us develop this tool, mold, and part. And let's get started. Now we've sketched out what we wanted to draw. So we're going to use our Symmetron software to design this part. When you're designing the part data. Uh, it's a lot different than designing the mold. So this area is typically all about cosmetic look. I am positioning this iguana lure on our Iger Mark Forged to print a prototype just to see what the overall um, design that Steve just finished up in the CAD looks like in person so I can have a visual um, of what it will look like and what it will turn out to be. Now that we've got the mold design completed, we're going to go in and design the electrode. So I'm trying to put this whole electrode, this whole part on one electrode, uh, which will give it a really good look cosmetically in the mold. And the other thing about this part is that it, we want a flat parting line because of the way that this type of mold works. It is a, a clamshell type tool and this is how the electrode's going to be designed, and well, hopefully it'll work. I've mentioned this before, when you're cutting small features like this, you really have to be careful how it's programmed, that you leave enough stock and that you end up getting uh, the features that you're after without chipping them off or breaking them. So that's very important when doing detailed, tiny features. All right, Ethan finished wiring this hole so we can pick up on it. I just wanna show how this works. This mold is actually gonna be located off this hole and this hole, which we, we know they match perfect. So when we EDM or we put the sinker in both sides, they'll match perfectly. So that's the whole reason behind this hole. And we'll, we'll be burning it soon. From the wire, we're gonna go to the sinker and make sure our block is flat and square um, in the XY plane. And then we're also going to pick up that back edge and the center pin uh, that we wired for location to make sure that each side will match. So there's the pin. We're gonna probe the center of that pin and then we'll be able to burn. At this point, we want to stop this burn just to take a look. With spikes and sharp points, you always want to just check the very beginning of a burn. Make sure there's no arcs or um, pits or anything that develop. Sometimes that can happen. So we're just stopping it um, in the beginning here just to see how it looks. Thank you. 
at this point we are gonna take another look it looks real clean the burns look good it's burning well so we're gonna actually clean it off a little and then we're going to let it finish the burn out and see how it goes As we're burning this lure, I do want to mention some of the challenges of burning aluminum. Uh, based on surface contact, you can have uh, problems with, with your burns, and especially when you have features that are really tiny. We're going to zoom up on this, this feature right here, these little fins. Normally, you have to have real fine settings, and doing a large part with a little tiny feature like that can cause an arc to build up. So when you're burning, it literally takes the debris and actually bonds it onto the tip, and you can actually burn in a giant hole. Um, on the older uh, EDM machines that I've run, I've had that happen to me, and it's actually wrecked electrodes. They're actually not wrecked with just the electrode, it's wrecked the steel or the aluminum that was burning. But this is actually a ton of detail. Um, I'm real excited to see how this comes out because it's gonna be uh, probably the, one of the most intricate all the features you can have on one electrode um, that you that I'd recommend doing, um, especially if you got to hit hit tolerances. But for this particular one, we're looking out. We're looking just for cosmetic look. So this should be a fun one to do. Let's talk about some overburn settings and surface contact for electrodes. Uh, one of the things about it, like this particular electrode, is very simple. It's round with electrodes like this. I would put as much overburn as you can based on your surface contact. So the larger your electrode, typically the larger the overburn you can go, which means you can force, or not force, but turn on the electrical current or the amps higher and it'll remove material faster. Um, when you get into a real intricate electrode like this one, then you've got to be real careful on what your settings are and how your overburn is. So if you go high overburn, large amperage, large current, then you can go fast. But if you're trying to get detail, then you're gonna wanna slow or reduce the current, reduce the settings, and it'll actually save your electrode features, and, and you'll have a lot better results when you're looking to make something real intricate. So most of the time you wanna go fast, but a lot of cases you wanna take care of making sure that shape that you're after is stays in there and stays on the on the steel the way you want it. This electrode is getting farther into the aluminum. It actually is having a better surface contact. Um, and if you, if you look on the screen right here, we can kind of see it. The, elect the efficiency is like 100% green. So when we started, our efficiency was a lot lower. It was, it was probably, I would say, a quarter of the way up. But as the electrode is making more contact and the currents are a little bit higher, it allows a more efficient burn as it goes deeper. So it's, it's hard to explain when you're, when you're burning, but when we started to, to now, we're within 70 thousandths of being done uh, in our Z-depth and a lot more contact. So we're getting a lot more surface area, a lot more materials coming off, and um, it burns better as it gets deeper. Well, it looks like it came out really good. We are gonna get this cleaned off, take a good look at it. All the details in there. Now we have the gate also. This is where the material is gonna flow in from the side and fill the part. This is just one separate electrode that we made. And now we're going to be burning the other side. So one side down, another side to go. We'll see how this side turns out. This is me and Smith's lure making setup. We are mixing up some plastisol right now, and we're gonna heat it up, add some color and some glitter, and then hopefully make a good first shot at our new mold. You want, you want, because I want a little see-through still. No, let's keep that. Let's keep I think that. I like it. Yeah, let's keep that.
Smith's getting ready to suck up all this plastisol, heated properly, and we're going to inject it into our mold now that it's hot enough. And he's squeezing it in there and basically holding the pressure as if it was like pack pressure and injection molding to help fill out the part. So it's filled, we're gonna let it cool for a second and then we'll open it up. As you can see on our tool, we haven't put the vents in yet, and venting is very important when you're doing any kind of injection molding. Um, it helps get all the gas out, helps the part fill properly. Um, so now that we've made some parts, we are testing out, um, this is called a Ned Rig in our fish tank, just to see how the lures look in the water and how they float, um, and the tail action and the claws, it looks really good. Smith said he was looking up different colored iguanas in the south and he came across like a orange red green color so we wanted to try um, to make orange ones as well so here's that. This is a beast of a bass. I wish I could show you our iguana that just caught it but it spit it right in there. So I'm gonna try to get another video. It's a beast. It's so cool. All right. Look at the size of this thing. Oh. That was awesome. <laughs> All right, lost the green one. Going for the orange now. Two bass at this pond with our new lure. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Learn to Burn with Practical Machinist. Uh, I just want to give a quick shout and thanks to Cam Logic and Do It Molds for their help on this project and also Murphy for putting this together. This was her idea for someone special in our shop, Smith. So hopefully you liked our, our program today and tell us what you liked about our, uh, our experiment in this kind of mold. This is something we've not done before. so. Uh, we figured using the EDM uh, to, to show some interesting things would be um, educational, if nothing else, and a little entertaining. So join us next time for another episode. Thank you. Say that again? <laughs> <laughs> I can't do soft bite, I gotta do jiggly ones. No. Today's episode is, that's gonna be a blooper. <laughs>